Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break podcast. In today's episode, we are going to talk about how AI is simplifying the hardest and most complex problem in modern e-commerce inventory. Joining me on the show is Fabrizio Miranda, founder and CEO at Fleba.com. So let's dive right into it. This is the e-commerce coffee break. A top-rated Shopify growth podcast dedicated to Shopify merchants and business owners looking to grow their online stores. Learn how to survive in the fast-changing e-commerce world with your host, Klaus Lauter, and get marketing advice you can't find on Google. Welcome, 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 welcome to, to the, the show. show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce Coffee Break podcast. Today we want to find out how artificial intelligence AI is simplifying the hardest and most complex problem in modern e-commerce. We're talking about inventory. With me on the show today are Fabrizio Miranda. He is the founder and CEO of Fliba.com, an inventory planning platform for modern commerce. Born in Brazil, he became an entrepreneur at 26 years old and was involved in multiple ventures. Fabrizio moved to the US in 2013 and has founded and co-founded five businesses since then and they're all currently currently operational. So always great to talk to another entrepreneur and that's welcome. I'm the show. Hi, how are you today? Yeah, how are you doing, Klaus? Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for having me and thanks everybody who's listening too. Let's dive right into it. So inventory management is a critical part of every business and a lot of businesses um, have problems with that. So why is inventory management so critical for e-commerce brands? Yeah, inventory is the most important part of e-commerce. So if you don't have inventory, you don't sell. If you have more inventory than you should, your money is all all trapped in inventory. Uh, and if you see the success or insuccess of companies in history, uh, brands in history, they're almost always related to inventory mismanagement. And in history, for some reason, there was not a lot of investment in technology. Uh, it's a very complex problem to solve. It has a lot of different intricacies. Each company ended up solving their own processes with internal tools like Excel spreadsheets or internal legacy systems. And now we're seeing all the mess. You know, when COVID hit, we saw what happens when you don't invest in technology in a segment. So the whole supply chain was disrupted because mostly because of, of this lack of, of visibility, clarity, technology connections, and et cetera. You mentioned Excel. I think that's where everyone started some part in their business life and obviously running a business, specifically e-commerce business, is not the right tool. What is the biggest mistake that you see when it comes to inventory planning? Yeah, Excel spreadsheets are a great tool. I'm an Excel geek. I know everything about Excel. I use Excel in my daily life. Uh, but it's a great tool for certain things and it's not great for other things. And one thing it's not great for if, is if you have to process loads of data and different um, different sources of data, you have to connect to different systems and download reports and upload reports into Excel spreadsheets. And then uh, you have to manually create formulas connecting all these different reports. Uh, and all of the process is not only very prone to errors, but also um, what happens is, is, is you get wrong. You have to simplify a lot of things. So I, I give an example uh, using sales velocity. A lot of people use the concept of sales velocity uh, for mm -hmm. forecasting. So they basically get like the previous 30 days of sales, get an average of that and use that as their future sales. Um, and the only reason why this concept of sales velocity exists is because Excel has a, a cell that you have to add something to a cell. So uh, it's the, 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 the whole paradigm of Excel is basically using cells to make calculations. And in this case of forecast, cells are not the best way to make calculations because you're uh, first, you have to go back in your history and you have to see your whole history of sales. Then your history of sales has anomalies that you want to cancel out before you do any kind of projection to the future. For example, you were out of stock. You don't want to get the out of stock and project that as a zero sales for the future because you're going to be out of stock again. So you need to go back and you need to adjust for anomalies, stockouts, uh, price variations. You increase price, sales go down. You reduce price, sales go up. You don't want to feed that into algorithms because what's going to happen is that you're going to, the algorithms are going to think you have seasonality in that period when actually was a price variation. 
uh, listing suspensions on Amazon, influencer campaigns. There's endless things in the past that you have to first resolve to be able to do a, a good forecasting. Um, and in Excel spreadsheet, you just can't do that. You can't run algorithms. You can't go back in a string of data and start adjusting that string of data. All of that becomes really hard. And even if you try to do it, I have some spreadsheets that I was able to create kind of almost a Fleber light in the spreadsheet. It breaks very easily because it's right. so much processing that suddenly you don't you can't use that spreadsheet anymore. It doesn't open anymore. So Excel is just not the right tool. Yeah, and I don't think Excel in the first place was um, built for that. Uh, we just misused it not for that all. over over time. Now, obviously, yeah. inventory planning becomes incredibly complex, and you gave just some examples, specifically when you're selling on multiple marketplaces. And omni-channel, yeah. every DTC brand, every brand out there is omni-channel. The same applies to being on every marketing channel. You managed in TikTok growing very quickly. You might not have any numbers in the past. Can you break down why traditional tools in inventory planning um, fall short in solving such challenges? Yeah, uh, the, the traditional tools that were made for the regular world of retail, they were made to a, for a different paradigm. Uh, in the regular world of retail, you, need, you needed products on shelves to be able to enable your sales. So your sales were made after the product was physically on a shelf. Uh, so all those tools, they are made in, in the, the concept of having distribution to as many shelves as possible to enable sales. Um, and all of the forecasting is done at, at, with, uh, I usually say, you know, if you're building a, a, a building, for example, if you were off by one centimeter, is not that bad. But if you're building a built-in closet, If you're off by one centimeter, you're going to have a hole, you know, between the closet and the wall. So in the old world of retail, since everything was about volume, everything was about distributing to as many shelves as possible and sending to distribution centers, it was very inefficient. It was very volume driven and very inefficient. The tools would allow for adjustments that were not, you know, to the, to the most uh, uh, pristine accuracy. In the new world of retail, you sell a digital interface in e-commerce and you would just fulfill the, the, the units later. So mm -hmm. the more efficient you are in inventory, the better. So there's this huge shifting paradigm from very volume driven and very low efficiency to very low volume, high efficiency in this new modern world. Be besides that, each channel has their own intricacy. Um, if you go on Amazon, the paradigms of the Amazon are ranking, reviews, and other things that allow you to sell more or less. So when doing a forecasting for Amazon, it's a lot different than doing a forecasting for Shopify, for example, where the paradigm is more, uh, if you're able to drive traffic to your website, there's no customer there for you already, like you have on, on Amazon, there's no ranking and et cetera. So paradigms are different. Wholesale, even more different because wholesale, you're receiving a purchase order from your retailer And you have to fulfill the purchase order. So it's zero, zero, zero. Suddenly you receive 2,000 units. Then zero, 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 3,000 units. And the old tools, they are just not able to deal with those different intricacies. It's a whole new business, the whole new world of modern commerce. So that's why we say that we're building the inventory planning for the, the intricacies and, and spe specifically designed for modern commerce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just let's dive into it. So Fleba is a solution addressing these challenges and providing a competitive advantage by taking all these moving parts into consideration. Talk me through it. How does it work? Yeah, so we connect to different sources of data. Uh, so you can have Amazon, for example, we connect to your sales inventory for uh, sales from Amazon inventory from FBA. Uh, you have uh, Shopify, we connect to uh, sales and inventory if you're using that. I mean, now it's delivery, so now it's outside of Shopify, it's with Flexport. But at the time the Shopify had delivery in it, it would get the delivery information from Shopify, now we get it from Flexport. Uh, we connect to any any source pretty much uh, of data. Uh, and even if we don't have a, a native connection, we have manual ways to connect to that with the Google Sheets, since, uh, um, using Google Sheets as a middleware. Uh, then we get all that data. And the first thing that we do is we normalize that data, as I was saying before. So we go back in history, we start adjusting the, the anomalies so that you don't feed your 
forecasting with the wrong set of data. So we adjust for stockouts, for price variations, for uh, outliers such as influencer campaign, uh, uh, listing suspensions, any anything that happened in the past that changes the behavior of the data uh, uh, abnormally, uh, we mm -hmm. will uh, correct that. And we will substitute those sales for what would have been the sale if that anomaly did not exist. Then we have a much better, just that by itself improves in 40%, up to 40% the quality of the forecast. Even if you use a moving average, the same moving average, if you use over data that is not pre-processed versus data pre-processed, it's a 40% uh, uh, better, better forecast that you get. Uh, and then after that, we generate forecasts. We have a set of 16 algorithms, all machine learning uh, based. Uh, and if you don't like it, you can also use your moving averages or last year sales. We have a flexibility. Uh, and then after that, we start plugging inventory to this calculation. So we imagine that everything is strings of data. Like we have the future sales, the future forecast. Then we have, we start plugging inventory today. We start plugging POs and TOs that we will arrive in the future and we build a future inventory forecast. Once more, no formulas. Everything is based on strings of data, which is the beauty of using a system versus a spreadsheet. And then with that, we give you full visibility of what's going on. Uh, we are able to solve, for example, if you have the same 3PL serving multiple channels, we can do that. If you have mm -hmm. um, the same fulfillment serving multiple channels, we can do that. If you have like east-west, uh, warehouses, we can split the sales to the right warehouses. If we have kits and bundles, back orders, all those complexities of modern commerce are dealt by this this very sophisticated, by far, and if any competitor is seeing, I, I challenge any competitor to go against us and, 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 and check our con inventory consumption machine. Uh, it's by far the most sophisticated in the market. Yeah, a lot of moving parts there. You just mentioned um, one number on there um, on results that people saw. Can you share a specific case study or success story? You don't need to name the brand where Flyby has significantly impacted the business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, we have, we have a, a, I think that the most clear case is COVID because COVID is something that you can't predict. Mm -hmm. uh, it's impossible that any algorithms would predict that COVID would exist, right? And it transformed, completely transformed how brands would sell uh, especially online. So we had a customer uh, called Bonzia. Bonzia Brands is a coffee uh, brand, and they would sell $1.5 million on Amazon, um, which was already pretty good, but it was a small a small brand overall. Um, and then COVID hit. Everybody would buy coffee at the grocery store, but when COVID hit, there was no grocery store and you have to buy coffee online. Suddenly what our system started showing was sales are going up, then the, the forecast starts going up. Because forecast starts going up, the consumption of inventory starts being uh, uh, deeper. You have to start consuming more inventory quicker. Uh, and then because you start consuming inventory quicker, we start saying you need to replenish sooner. Uh, and then we started generating alerts. You need to replenish, and they would replenish. And you know that, that was not enough. Next day, you need to replenish more. They would replenish. Up to the day that was not possible to replenish anymore, first because of their factory shut down, and then they didn't have enough time to replenish. And then our system starts saying, you're going to run out of stock. So since you will run out of stock and since inventory is not able to arrive before that, because it's physical, it's impossible for that to arrive, you need to start changing your sales. So they started changing the sales, first reducing the advertising spend. It was not enough. Sales would still go up, go up, go up. Then they started increasing price to hold sales. And, you know, as a result, uh, six months into COVID, they were the only brand on Amazon with coffee. And they went from 1.5 million in sales pre-COVID to 6.5 million in sales post-COVID. Uh, and they sustained it. Up to today, they are over $5.5 million in sales because they they were so good at, at managing that that uh, the, the, the two sides of, of the two levers that they have, the inventory first, and when inventory was not possible, the sales lever. And this is what we bring as, as uh, a result to, to all the brands that work with us is a clear visibility of what's gonna happen with inventory and solutions using both levers, inventory and sales. 
I think that was a very good example to show that customer satisfaction means product availability and also brand recognition. You build up your brand reputation by being able to sell. I think a lot of, and that includes me with my Shopify store that I had for many years, um, there might be just a marketing campaign and you said that's very successful and then you're selling out and then a lot of customers will not come back. So you're losing them and that might be specifically with coffee for instance returning business subscription business and you will never get exactly. them back so it has a lot to do with um, brand recognition and, and customer um, satisfaction there now what are the first steps that a uh, brand should do when they want to improve their inventory management yeah i think the the a lot of people think it's rocket science to start yes there is a little bit of rocket science with all the machine learning algorithms but that's not what I like to say that makes most difference, I think the mm -hmm. most difference that it makes is having visibility, data visibility. If you have data visibility, everything else is kind of solved as a consequence of that because data visibility gives you insights that you wouldn't have if you did not have visibility. So the simple fact, what happens a lot with us, it's very funny. Uh, customers just connect their accounts into Fleeburn. And for mm -hmm. the first time in history, first, they see a supply chain map. Uh, so they see how the data is connected and, and visibly see, you know, the boxes, you know, have Amazon here, have FBA here, FBA is connected to Amazon. And you have a 3PL that is connected to FBA, but this 3PL is also connected to Shopify as a fulfillment. And all of that for the first time is visible. Uh, second, they see their whole sales history in charts that they can interact with, compare periods, and they can do that for multiple accounts. So on Amazon, you can do that for a single account. So imagine if you go to the business reports on Amazon uh, to see your single account uh, uh, performance, but imagine if that same view was able to show you all your accounts combined across all the channels that you have. So that's the first thing we bring. Then forecasts is, is, is the biggest one because in forecasts, for the first time, they see seasonality in their forecasting a chart because they are now using a sales velocity, which is a cell, which is like a flat number. They see seasonality. They see for certain periods how the sales are going to be. They can compare and change and adjust and create promotional campaigns, for example, that they say they're going to sell more during that period and see immediately the impact that they have on the forecast. Uh, so all of those things in forecast. They see, for the first time, they see a chart also showing their inventory consumption by inventory location. Uh, mm -hmm. And with all those intricacies that I was talking about, if you have bundles and kits and bundles, for example, that will be taken into consideration. It will be, you'll be able to see that those kits and bundles, how much they are consuming from that inventory location and how much another pro the, the product on Amazon is consuming and how much you know product on Shopify is consuming. All of that is visible. Um, and you can start seeing also when you need to replenish and products that are overstocked and all of those things are brought to your to your your uh, face and you're able to for the first time see a bunch of those things that you don't see hidden in in cells on excel spreadsheets so that by far and that is not sci rocket science that is ex you know strictly showing the data that is already there right, right? and that is by far the biggest aha moment uh, that the customers have. And then when they start uh, simulating purchases and transfers, seeing that they can select a different period and see how much they are going to uh, consume on that specific period, according to all the seasonal patterns, all the planning promotions that they have across channels and all those things, uh, then it becomes a huge no-brainer to, to use that. And customers just don't leave. We have a, our, our uh, churn is less than 3% a year. So it's really, really extremely small because customers just cannot leave after they start using this this type of tool. Okay. On that note, who's your perfect customer? Are there specific industries or verticals that are using your tool more than others? Yeah. Uh, we So the perfect customer is any brand, uh, any brand that sells anywhere, but mostly companies that are mostly selling online. Um, and 5 million up, to $100 million in annual sales is the sweet spot. We do have brands that sell in the one to two million range, uh, some of them really, really active, but those brands are more like visionaries. They are trying to you know, set up process, which, which is great. 
but the market hasn't gotten there yet. Brands that are at 1 million, usually they're trying to survive. They're trying to increase sales and make a business out of this thing. Uh, when they get to 5 million, it's unbearable. It's really hard for you to manage mm -hmm. inventory, especially if you're multi-channel. So five to 100 million, we have a few brands over 100 million. We have a few brands less than 100 million, but most uh, less than 5 million, I'm sorry. But most of them are in this five to 100 million range. Uh, apparel, apparel companies are challenging because of the way they operate. Apparel companies usually operate with collections. They don't care much about the life cycle of the pro like the, the history of the product, mm -hmm. uh, replenishing the same product in multiple years. And that in in impacts in the in the way that our forecast is done. So in this case, when we have apparel brands, when we have apparel brands that are not very complex, we keep them. We have a bunch of customers in apparel. But when we have very complex ones, we send to you know companies that would be kind of competitors of ours but they are specifically targeted in apparel brands and we, we want the best for the customer. So we just send it to them. Uh, but outside of apparel, like it's a great fit, you know, supplements, vitamins have a lot of intricacies. Uh, they're a great fit. We have a bunch of supplement vitamins brands. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. You said earlier that um, your algorithm needs some time to, to kick in. Walk me through the typical onboarding process for a new user. What kind of steps are involved? Yeah. How long does it usually take? Yeah, that's that's uh, a great question because a lot of people think it's extremely complex to onboard in such a system. And it used to be, we used to have like a 25 day uh, onboarding and now it's literally minutes. Uh, so what happens is that uh, when the customer goes and connects the accounts, we start downloading the information from that account. And the first thing we download is the product list uh, and we'll show the product list in a matter of two minutes. Uh, we'll show all the product lists from the accounts and they are able to just uh, defined because the product lists come by SKU. Um, mm -hmm. If you have only Amazon, you can choose the ASIN to be the, the code that you're, is going to identify your products. But if you're multi-channel, you usually have some internal code across that you use across all right. the channels. Uh, so you're able to input those codes uh, and kind of map those products into Cleaver. That's the first part. Um, and then we're downloading the sales data. We're downloading the inventory data from the integrations. You also just have to say what is the fulfillment and the storage warehouse for each one of your um, of your sales channels. And mm -hmm. when you do that, we just map that and the system, it, it's just a matter of waiting for the system to, to download all the data. So the setup itself takes 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, we help customers set up if they can uh, schedule a, a meeting with us. And it's a half an hour meeting, so it's really, really quick. We set up the whole uh, system in that time and it's just a matter of waiting for the system to download from the integrations in a matter, depending on the size of the brand, it can take, you know, 45 minutes or it can take eight hours for us to just download that information. And when the customer gets back to the system, they will receive a notification. When they get back to the system, they're able to see the whole system with all the forecasts and everything else already set up in front of them. And then it's just a matter of them, you know, adjusting whatever they want to adjust in terms of parameters, defining what is the lead time of each one of the products, defining what is the minimum days of stock that they want to keep, the safety of stock, defining what is the overstock trigger, uh, defining what is the maximum stock that they want when they replenish. And when they define those parameters, everything is going to be uh, already operating. So it's extremely simple and, and straightforward. Okay. Let's talk about the pricing structure. Obviously, you said there are smaller brands, there's bigger brands. How do you charge them? What kind of pricing structure do you have? Yeah, the, the pricing today starts at two ninety nine for brands with less than two million dollars in sales, uh, and it goes up to we have brands paying over twenty thousand a month, depending on the size and the complexity that they have. Um, everything is on the website, so if you go to the website, you can see a pricing calculator showing exactly how much you would pay. Uh, we also have free trial. We have a thirty day free trial, and uh, we give mm -hmm. a. For now, we are giving a thirty percent. Uh, discount for the first four months because we're uh, just going out of the beta of the new version. We launched a new version of the system in March and we're dropping the beta now. So uh, we're incentivizing customers to come to this new new version of the system. Um, and uh, and yeah, so so it's it starts uh, really really low the price two ninety nine per month and the average that we have for customers is around two thousand two hundred per month. That's the average that the customers. Uh, pay us because we have bigger customers today no that makes perfectly sense and obviously if you're running out of stock that will cost you much more than <laughs> what oh the, much the, more the yeah I usually, I mean. 
if you, if you check if you check the numbers in your first purchase, you're able to recover the whole year of, of fees that we charge because it's it's what customers are all the brands. If you go to to um, uh, any research online, uh, there's eight, around eight point five percent in losses due to stockouts and overstocks. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's crazy if you're selling you know a million if you're selling you know a thousand dollars. Uh, that would be eighty five right dollars. If you're selling a million dollars, it's eighty five thousand uh, dollars. If you're selling ten million dollars, it's eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars that you're losing due to stockouts and overstocks. And uh, you know, if you're paying us, you know, for ten million dollars, if you're paying us six to eight thousand dollars a year, uh, that's a no brainer, right? You get it, like yeah, seventy two thousand dollars <laughs> back, yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's, it's overall, it's a no brainer. Um, before we come to the end of the coffee break today, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet? Yes, uh, I think the, the AI part of, of this whole thing, how AI is going to influence uh, inventory moving forward. I had a um, webinar the other day about the importance of data contextualization. I just want to preach that. Um, in retail, if you go to almost any segment and you get the raw data, you're able to get the raw data. You have already the diamond in your in your hands, and you're using you know data and you're feeding that data into algorithms, and that is working. In retail, is one of the only segments that even if you're able to get the raw data, that data is still wrong because that data will have stockouts. That data will have uh, moments that you had price difference. You you will have. Uh, influencer campaigns, you will have all those things that I mentioned throughout the episode. So it's really important for you to create in your company, if you're a brand, uh, to create a discipline of contextualizing that data. The way that I would do it is every single day, go to yesterday and start annotating what happened to each one of the products that had some kind of anomaly. Uh, Even if you have 2,000 products, the 2,000 products are not going to have anomalies on the same day. So just identify the the you know fifty ones that had anomalies. You know, you had a stock out, or you had some promotion that you made on that day, or your competitor were out of stock, and that's why you you sold more on that day. So all of those things, uh, I call it data contextualization. You you create annotations for that. That is going to be worth so much money in this new world of AI. Today we're still in the early days, but very soon you're going to be able to just load that into AI. And brands that have data contextualized will have a crazy competitive ad- advantage over brands that have uncontextualized data. So start contextualizing your data. We do that automatically at Fleeber, but you don't have, if you don't use Fleeber, just do that in your mm-hmm. spreadsheet. Create a process where you change the sales for what would have been the sale if you're not out of stock or if you didn't have that influence for campaign and annotate what happened on that day and just store that. That is going to be worth so much but for you in the future, uh, that's going to create a huge competitive advantage. Okay, oh, thanks for sharing that. I think that's a very important point that you made there. Um, data is so important, and I think a lot of businesses sort of survive with average data quality, um, and they could do so much better by just doing what you just said, or just making sure that the data is cleaned out and is really usable data put it that way um so yeah. i think that's very important the ai obviously will help with that where can people go to find out more about you guys yeah if you go to fleber.com f-l-i-e-b-e-r.com or uh if you look for me on linkedin fabrice miranda uh you, you probably will see my name on the call out of this episode um and you can contact us at any time we have also an instagram account uh, at fleber um, and um, just contact us anytime. You, if you go to the website, you can start a free trial. If you want a demo first, you ha- also have the option of asking for a demo. Uh, we're very, very customer centric. If you go to g2.com and see the reviews about Fever, you'll see what our customers talk about us. And I invite all the brands to you know, start coming to this new world of data, data, data. I usually say that uh, marketing in the past was about location, location, location. That's what we would learn in our MBAs. And now it's going from location, location, location to data, data, data. You have to start soon. Uh, otherwise, you're going to miss the, 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 the party. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I'm a marketer for 25 years and data is really the key point of 
doing marketing nowadays. So 100% right. Yeah. Cool. Fabrizio, thanks so much for your time today. I think you gave a very good overview where inventory management is right now and what is state of the art. And I hope a lot of people will reach out to you. I will put the links as always in the show notes. Then you're just one click away. Thanks so much for your time today. Awesome. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone who's listening.